screen. Boom, boom, boom. It's an article written by Jonah Engel Bromwich. It's called Streetwear is not. It's hot. It's still hot. Influencer services say are not. Um, and this article basically uh lays down the moniker regard or kind of rounds up some of the knowledge gained from the streetwear report that Hypebeast put out recently. And it reads as follows: A new survey of a large number of streetwear and suggests suggest that the influence of influence the influence of influencers has been widely overstated. Only a third of those surveyed said social media influencers were the most credible figures in fashion. They are more likely to impress by musicians and industry insiders, which are influencers, right? Aren't they influencers? Is that the same thing? I guess an influencer is solely somebody that it is is an an influencer would be someone that just dresses or wears stuff to be an influencer. They don't, they don't actually have a job, maybe, they don't, right? They're not a craft or anything, maybe. I don't know. Still, in a second survey, people who work in the streetwear industry, a majority of the rep- respondents said that they spent between a quarter and three quarters of their marketing budget on influencers. All this information comes from the Streetwear First Impact Report, which was released on Tuesday. Published by Hypebeast, the prominent fashion magazine, uh, say by 40,000 people. It also highlights the way that we collect um the way that a collection of fashion and subcultures were laced together and pulled towards the mainstream. Angela Back, the former band director of Supreme, probably the biggest streetwear brand at the moment, said that the term streetwear had a barely existed in 2010 when brands long favoured by rappers, surfers and graffiti artists and skateboarders became interested in the fashion industry. Prior to that, it was an urban wear. There was just ne- there was ju- there was just a nice way of saying these clothes are for blacks and Puerto Ricans. In the 1980s, the early 1990s, a certain kind of independent clothing brand began to proliferate. On the West Coast, there were surf and skate brands like Sushi and Fresh Drive and hip-hop brands like X-Large and Cross Colors. On the East Coast, there were Triple Five Soul, Echo Limited Supreme, amongst many others. Cool. Uh, the timing of a happy support made sense for Bark Streetwear had, he said, had reached this 10th inning as social media created more awareness and as internet incubator rap groups that all future came around streetwear started to become mainstream and then angela says the following there was money to be made there's no secret anymore that's why for me i think about the moment when all future started to blowing up and it all started blowing up which is fairly true i think this might marry up to my disinterest with the london streetwear scene i mentioned a few times here before how shitty some of the people were at end clothing, not end, sorry, at Bond International, at Bape, in um, the old, uh, what's it called, hideout store, right? Everyone was, with the exception of the guys from Foot Patrol, everyone was really arsy. And a lot of it might have to do with the fact that, you know, they weren't used to having so many young kids around that energy. But again, I I, I do remember it changing quite quite drastically when Old Future put their, you know, first kind of project, couple of projects out and, I don't know if it might have been just after when just when Goblin came out, no Bastard Story came out, right? By um Talon Crater. So I did see a bit of a shift in the kind of attitudes towards young kids. I did see a lot of more of those stores, especially hideouts start hiring loads of children or loads of teenagers to kind of give them the cachet that they're a cool young place and they're with the you know, they're with the kids or that malarkey. So I didn't recognise that change, so that might be something that he's speaking on and it continues. In the early 90s, we were all rooted in some sort of subculture, said everybody the designer behind the label. Fuck, for example, skating or graffiti or punk rock and and versus versus brands today, they're not rooted in any subculture. They just, they just sort of support that. No, which is true, right? You see a lot with that psych ward brand, right? These kind of Instagram brands just pop up out of nowhere with like really crazy graphics um, and they only have one or two items available on their store or maybe nothing. Um, it's just very, very bizarre. I never really understood that sort of thing. But hey-ho. Um, like comic books or underground music, a 1990s streetwear habit required devotion. DJ Ross Wan, a leading collector of rap t-shirts, said that traveling to New York um, had been like making a pilgrimage in which the holy sites were Triple Five Souls, Canal Street, Jeans, and Fat Farm, which is very true. When I went to New York in 2009, I think it might have been, right? That was a very much so a spiritual experience, man. Because again, I had I was so obsessed with the retail mafia, so obsessed with finding out all these little cool places that they all went to when they were um, in New York, like you know some of my forefathers people I see back in the day in the interviews and stuff. That was a fairly, fairly, fairly cool thing to see. Go to New York and see that for yourself, like wow, right? Cool, cool, cool. especially going to the Supreme Store in Lafayette. Like fucking hell, I've been dreaming about this place forever, and now look, I'm finally in here. It's like amazing. A lot smaller than what it looks like in, in, in on the internet, but you know, still great experience. Um, 
uh, it says here the thought of reselling it would have been devastating to me to lose even one of those shirts because it was hard to get and won it so badly also anybody who would have bought it the internet ross one said is the biggest is the beginning and the end of any conversation about things that used to be sacred that are now not there is no more underground culture of course because the internet internet it does exist but it's just not underground i think underground culture is always is always going to exist because there's always going to be people that want to be subversive that want to be fair more that want to kind of hide in the shadows and do their own thing and take the interest you know behind closed doors but i think for the most part most in underground club cultures do exist it's just this just, just time exists online whether it's a facebook group whether it's an instagram page they exist they exist they exist, they exist. i i think so anyway in my opinion uh the report was joined effort by hypebeast and the uh, and the waviest auditing firm price waterhouse cooper a dr axel nish an expert of fashion sports psychology and strategy and he said the following should we manage to create this, this desirable product for this desirability for the product something that the bulk of the fashion industry has increased challenges in doing doing said mr niche who co-authored who co-authored the report with enrique mendez hype senior features editor those brands uh sneaker brands have tremendous credibility within the peer group that comes out of, of the community has that community of creators and crusaders many of them people of color been lifted behind uh by a large industry interest the report defines streetwear as fashionable casual clothes which is very true the suggestion uh being that you know when you see it and makes room for luxury streetwear brands including off-white ambush and vetomer why do you put ambush there does anyone wear ambush clothing it's an odd thing to put there, right? Ambush. Huh. There's definitely a whole appropriation conversation. There's thousands more conversations as well as to be had on the point, which is a good way of saying, I don't know, don't ask me. As a brand and as a com- company, the answer is not uh, to is not to inauthentically try to leap up, leap, try to tap into this movement. In my perspective, the best thing that brands can do is put people in positions of power who come from those communities. Or, forget that, just have a brand that's representative of the people that buy your, your clothing, man. I don't get why that's so difficult. This re- this culture preparation stuff and representation stuff is so stupid. It's not even about um, ticking the boxes and having four black girls work in your company. No, just have the brand reflect where you live, reflect the people that buy, buy your products or use your services. That's all people ask for, really, right? It's like a bunch of fat girls turning up to a fitness expo, right, to get all, all, bi- all biographies from their favorite YouTuber. You probably would be a bit concerned if you saw them standing there with a table full of girls that are incredibly obese. That's probably not the good look. You want your fans to really, 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 really mirror what who you are as a person. I think so, in my opinion. Um, and he continues. He says there's some. There's definitely a whole appropriation coming. No, so I read that already. Forty uh, percent of North America and Europe respondents said that the community had had been key to their interest in streetwear of course that's very very true um only 12 percent of asian respondents said the same which is true which is, makes a lot of sense right um you get the feeling that a lot of the asian um buyers of streetwear tend to just buy it because they like expensive clothing or they just like to buy stuff they don't necessarily have that community aspect of it as well which is interesting because they have a lot of big accounts in um or big stores in china that sell a lot of a lot of streetwear, right? They they fucking make a lot of money. <gasps> Some of the big releases, they always have massive queues that go around the block, especially when clock drops stuff. So you'd imagine it would be a community because my time in streetwear, um, the, the some of the best times had been like queuing up, right? Uh, outside of a store waiting for something to release right Start, uh, meeting new people meeting old people, right? That used to be my the, the best time. I fucking loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. So Again, um, I'm not too sure why that is and why some people don't want the community. But again, that that, that to me was the best part. That, that's where you you built some real friendships, man. You made some friends for life. Um, and it was really good experience being those kind of queues. I really kind of missed that side of streetwear. Really, um, again, now it's probably not as fun because most people out in the queues are just there to make money on reselling and stuff, which is fine. Again, because if you want to be entrepreneur Gary V type style thing is flip items, and you might find your tribe there. But I think the overall vibe of chilling out and maybe you know going for the mcdonald's breakfast run and people holding your place in the line it's just ugh, some of the best times i've had ever man i really really enjoyed it um ba, 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 ba. the sadness of it of of, of it today as the article continues mr Brunetti says goes against what it originally stood for it's very similar to punk or early hip-hop it was a retaliation or a rebellion now it's become the opposite of rebellion it's become corporate sanitized and passionate which is true I think some brands have become that. I think I don't begrudge them though. I think if you're a brand that's been around ten plus years, 
you've come through the ebbs and flows you've gone through financial turmoil you've had inner beefs you've had industry beef you've had customers that hate you customers abandon you i think you're well in your rights to go for the standardized pasteurized corporate way of approaching business and really just cash out and live your life in relative luxury and peace if any of you guys have been to streetwear trade shows you only have to you only have to buy one of these brand owner guys a drink to realize how miserable an experience it is to be at a trade show right especially trade shows that are just about the look and not about doing business right you spend a lot of money flying there flying your products there um booking supposed interviews or booking supposed appointments with brands and buyers only to be told that you should be make this their different color we don't want that we want this we want this we don't want that it must be so frustrating right and again just the kindness of the industry in general um so again if you're 10 years in and you're thinking you know what i just want to cash in and start making you know all my clothing have words on them and shit and bright colors and stuff and track suits and stuff that can match sneakers and stuff i don't blame you honestly don't I honestly don't man like the streetwear business is a brutal business a lot of money to be made but it's fucking cut for us fuck um mr mendez insisted that corporate buy-in did not in itself hurt the brand's authenticity as an example he pointed to wall streetwear in 2017 supreme accepted the carlyle group in a private equity firm as an investor supreme is doing well mr mendez said they haven't lost any hype Mr. Buck and John Ross One agreed that Supreme continued to make great clothing, but each said that the brand's clientele had changed. Ross One was blunt about the shift. You can't be mad at Supreme. I still like their look at their clothes and think, wow, this is really cool, he said. The thing that's not cool is the kids that are wearing it, which is essentially the main problem with streetwear. That's been a problem with streetwear from the very beginning, right? It's it's not really about the it's not really about the majority it's just about the minority of people who look like absolute weapons wearing some of the stuff that they wear right that's always been the issue that some people have had with it even with the term hype beast not necessarily bad to be a hype beast if you want to be that but you know going out and wearing head to toe you know supreme louis vuitton collaborations with really expensive trainers and really expensive glasses just like it's just so much cringe um and supreme's had to kind of weather that and i think they've done probably the best right i think supreme fans are probably it's interesting because the hundreds got some maybe the hundreds have failed because their, their clothing got a bit crap right towards the end or maybe had that bit of a flow where the clothing was really really bad but maybe in comparison to what was out of the market i don't know i guess hundreds had the problem where people hated the pe- people outside people that weren't hundreds fans hated the hundreds mostly because of the people that bought the hundreds right or who were associated with them right it's the kids that used to see queuing up outside of their store you know filipino kids um who like to dance and stuff and you know i don't know <sighs> maybe that was it was that the was that the reason why i don't know i wonder why supreme's been able to not be hurt by their fans being dorks and the hundreds was but i guess because the products aren't as good right Le- the level of product kind of um is a bit different when it comes to the hundreds the hundreds product just couldn't it couldn't compete with the level of product uh quality that supreme were putting out over the a few years and so maybe that might be the reason but regardless it's a really good article i recommend you check it out it really speaks to a lot of the stuff that i've been thinking over the years and a lot of the people street have been thinking too um really good article by um new york times i'll link it again in the show notes it's called streetwear is still hot influencers are not which i don't actually agree with. i think influencers are still quite relevant i think you're, we're always going to be influenced by people right people of certain credibility level or certain experience level or certain expertise will inform some of our choices i think that's why people watch you know tech review channels and whatever maybe right you want to be influenced you want to go to somebody who you trust their opinion and see what they think of the item and then you make your own rational decision about it i think maybe the idea of just being an influencer not having any skin in the game that might die out soon rather than not right the idea just like you just review products you don't do anything else i think there might be an aspect of someone coming in and being i don't know an ex-designer at google or having had their own company that they started or being a brand builder right and then you're reviewing you know if you i guess if you're an influencer if you're an influencer who was um reviewing point of sale devices it'd probably make more sense or you probably add to your level of credibility if you also had your own store so you could have some anecdotal experience that you could kind of re- um, relay back into your reviews if just a kid sitting there reviewing uh per rest devices with no shop you don't understand the demands of having a business and what you need for a POS device it'll probably diminish your level of influence i'd assume so so i guess the same could be said for sneaker reviewers right you couldn't become a sneaker head reviewer if you didn't necessarily like sneakers just reviewing them from a purely design point of view you need to come from it from an aspect of either having your own store being a fan of shoes whatever there must be some skin in the game involved so that might be something that we see um changing in the near future kids just not kids being influenced for the sake of it might not be a thing 
but the fact that you know i don't again i just think some people in media i think people in general are probably cringed out by it or probably over the whole influencer thing and it's getting a bit annoying i understand it so people are trying to drive this narrative that it's, it's over but it isn't we know it isn't over it's never going to be over people are always going people are always going to want to be influenced people are always going to want to be an influencer and it's going to continue as long as social media is around we're not going to see a death of influencers anytime soon